Hi, this is Sheree with Rehash Fiber. Today I'm going to introduce you to a British designer who makes extraordinary Fair Isle patterns and kits. Welcome all you happy and curious fiber artists. I would like to make you aware of a brilliant knitwear designer from England named Marie Wallen. The first images I saw of her knitwear were on Instagram and they're so stunning. I invite you to check out her beautiful website, mariewallen.com to see all of the knitwear, the designs, the things you can purchase, the beautiful images. And she provides a wonderful introduction to herself, to the photographer, Peter, and to the model, Georgia. It is very much worth checking out. So I knew immediately looking at the sweaters that I wanted to make one. They are stunning masterpieces and I wanted to have this experience and then the item for myself. So I purchased Primrose in the original colors in size small medium. I ordered the kit and I received a box from England and inside it was a bag from Marie Wallen with the yarn and the pattern instructions. Come along on the journey while I make this sweater and I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way. First things first, and I know most of you know this, so this is for the people that don't. I look at everything as how can I make it the most efficient or less stressful for myself. So to start with, Marie Wallen sends this lovely leaflet that's beautiful. Go ahead and make your printouts of each page so that you can write on them, check them off, do whatever you want. So the first thing I did was next to the colors that have their names, I actually wrote the color I saw. So for instance, dark apple with its symbol, I wrote next to it, dark green. That way, when I am looking at the balls of yarn, I can find it quickly. This also was very helpful to have an oblong basket because I could lay all the yarn out and see it quickly and know what to grab for. So you can see if it were sitting in a dark bag or a box or something, you're constantly stumbling around looking for the colors. So it's nice to have them all laid out. My tip for casting on, because I've had to learn the hard way so many times with it twisting, when there's hundreds of stitches, I just work back and forth in stockinette until I get up about an inch. Then I can clearly see when I'm bringing it around to join it in the round that it is not twisted because the many times in the past when I've tried many different techniques to not get it twisted, it still ended up twisted. So that's just my thing. I did work up an inch and then I joined it in the round. Then in the end, when the project is finished, you just go in and fix that seam. Another tip, when you have hundreds of stitches on a needle, you want the ends protected when you're not working on it. You do not want to lose any of those stitches, especially Fair Isle because that can be very complicated if they all fall off. So have good needle tip protectors or stitch stoppers that will not come off. These I received as a gift and I tried to find them online for you to tell you about it, but I could not find them. If anybody else knows about these and can find them, please send me that information and I will share it. When you have tons of balls of yarn, start your pull from the center. That way you can keep your wrapping on it to always know what color it is and that way you're not getting mixed up. I don't think I need to remind anybody of this, but do the gauge and check it. I had to go down two needle sizes, which I was like, oh, they're getting smaller and smaller. I knew this was going to be a great investment in time, and I wanted a sweater that's gonna fit in the end. So do do your gauge and go accordingly to that. A personal preference thing for me is to work the sleeves with a circular needle rather than double points. I have a hard time with the double pointed needles. I feel like there are sticks everywhere. So I have a nine inch circular and I worked the sleeves with this and it just felt so much better for me. When I got to the neck, I also used a circular needle, one that's much longer and did the magic loop. So some of the plastic cording is hanging out of the neck. So it enabled me to work on the needles and then make adjustments as necessary. It made it go so much better for me. So here's a few more shots of the progress along the way.
one more cool thing. The yarn smelled a little bit like sheep and I loved it. It just made me think of Britain and the beautiful countryside there and the sheep that gave me this wool that I am working with to make this beautiful garment. So it was pretty cool. So friends, it's finished. Here is my primrose and I'm so excited to show it to you. So the only thing I really can say at this point is if you decide to take it on, it is an investment in your time, but it is this beautiful thing that transpires through your fingers. You have the wool from the glorious sheep and these beautiful colors and this great design. Thank you, Marie Wallen. And in the end, you have a masterpiece that you will keep forever. So there's something to think about. Midway through knitting this, I went ahead and taped a demonstration on how I do Fair Isle knitting. So I will show that to you next. Mind you, there are different techniques that different people do, and I'm just showing you mine. Also during the demonstration, I explained to you why I like to keep my floats to a minimum. I do not like long strands of yarn on the backside. And I show you how I do keep them to a minimum. And lastly, this is the first project I've ever done that is called for a steam iron finish. So I'll show you how that is done. I'm gonna show you how I do the Fair Isle color switches. All right, so I'm now working a 24 stitch pattern repeat. So you can see I have my markers here which if you do Fair Isle, you understand. If not, I'll explain that the stitch pattern is the 24 inches and it gets marked every 24. And that really helps keep things in order because all I have to do is worry about what happens within these 24 stitches. If I screw up, I'm only going back to 24 and say I get interrupted and I need to finish up quick. I just finish the 24, good place to stop. And um, it's just super helpful. All right, so I do my color switches by using my pointer finger because I knit the English way with my right hand by throwing, but I use my pointer finger to take control of the color that I'm going to use next. So right now we're starting off with this pattern repeat with two browns. So that one's up. Now we're switching to the blue, so just like so. Now the next is gonna be four browns, but I'm gonna stop after two because I'm gonna tell you that I do not like floats, which means when you drag the fiber, the color you're not using behind the other stitches, that's a float. But I don't like my floats any longer than two stitches because when I was a kid, I was given some sweaters that had long floats and my fingers would get caught in them when I was putting it on and it just was frustrating. And so to this day, I don't want any thread that anything can get caught in, or I should say any yarn. So that's my threshold. I float for two stitches only. But how I do it is that you end up weaving or twisting the other yarn in behind so that it's not floating, but it's still coming along with you and it's not showing in the front either. So we're gonna do that right here. I have to do a total of four brown stitches. And so I've done my two brown. Now, to do the third brown, this, and I can just tell sometimes if the back, if the yarn not being used is sitting a little bit higher, it's just a, a feeling after working with it so much. When it's sitting higher, I just lay it over that yarn, kind of hold it with another finger, and I knit my stitch. Now blue is coming with me. It's not showing in the front, but it's not being floated too long in the back either. All right. Now I'm gonna switch colors to two blues. 
we're going to do three browns, switching colors. One and two. I do not want it to float any longer than two. So now I can feel the way this is laying that it's not going over this time. I think just because the way it's sitting in my hands, but this is the other way to do it. You lay it over your needle. You don't knit it, it's just there. But you see when I go to knit with the brown, it's crossing over the yarn and catching it. The blue is not coming into the stitch. It's just laying there to get caught. So there, you see, it's not being drug. It got nicely caught up and the work on the back looks nice and we're carrying on. So we've got one blue, three browns again. See how I switch? Now I need to catch that blue so that it's not floating for more than the two that I like. I'm going to lay it over the brown. And knit. I've got two blues. Four browns. Laying the yarn over the needle. Crossing over the yarn. It's not coming through the stitch. Just getting hooked. Switching to blue. Switching to brown. And there is one of the 24 stitch repeats. All right, so these are very handy. They're strong. There's a spring inside. They hold onto your needles very well so that this will not go sliding off and your work is not ruined. So I highly recommend these. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the back of the work. You see how it's looking nice and tidy. The floats aren't too long. Everything's nice and tucked in. And that's how that's done. Missy Cuss and another viewer were asking about my boots that I got in Sedona. They finally came and here they are. So thanks guys, that's kind of fun sharing that with you. This is my girl Nala here. She's rarely on the show, but she came along today just to see what was going on and take a bath <laughs> in front of everybody. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, folks, of course, I have to talk about Patreon because that is how I get paid. I love doing this show. I love exploring everything for you and it does cost to keep it all going. So Patreon can be found on my website, rehashfiber.com. If you're enjoying the programming, I invite you to give just a little bit each month. It all adds up and it helps keep the show going. So I appreciate it. So as I close out the show, I'm gonna show you how Rocky joined me during the demonstration on Fair Isle Knitting but was a bad boy. <laughs> so you can see what goes on there. All right, everybody. Happy knitting, Fair Isle, and thanks for watching. But, um, okay, don't bite me, okay? We're gonna show people what to do. All right, so we'll see if we can do this. He's truly co-hosting today, pretty funny. Okay, so, <laughs> 
Here we go. Um, no, you can't interrupt when I'm doing the show. Okay. You can just sit there and be good. Good boy. All right. The funny thing is I can't see my pattern with him in the way. With his big, beautiful body in the way. Hers would get caught before I even had the sweater on and it drove me crazy. So now I have this thing with, I will not float longer than two stitches, but all you have to do is a little twist. Um, okay, hope you have a sense of humor, but his tail is here. <laughs> We're just gonna deal with it because he's so funny. Okay, so here's how we do this. Oh, no, Rocky, that's not gonna work. You can't grab the stuff or bite me or bite me. Now there's to be three browns. <laughs> But I don't like the long float, so I'm laying the blue over it and then doing the next one. Oops. You're going to have to go somewhere else if you're going to bite me. Um, don't bite me. That's rude. Don't kick either. I'm trying to. You're going to have to go in the other room. No. Mm -mm. No. 